Hello, my fellow gnomes. So we're back inside studio. I have my explore properties and output windows open, and we're going to go ahead and add in a part. Now there's many ways to move a part. We can obviously do it inside of studio, nice and easy. And if we want to move it in game, we can do something maybe using tween service, which I've showed you how to do before. But today we're going to use something called lurping. Now we're going to have this part, make sure it's anchored. And we're going to go ahead then and add in a script inside of the part. So we're going to need to access the part. First of all, local part equals script dot parent. And then we're going to get its C frame. So local start C frame equals part dot C frame. Now, if you're not familiar with C frame, it's essentially a combination of its position and orientation. So if we put the part selected, if we look in the properties, we can see it's C frame. It contains a position and an orientation value. The orientation is zero, zero, zero because it's uh, it's not been rotated. But if I was to uh, rotate it around, you can see how I've moved it 45 degrees on the X axis. And if I was to move it around, then its position value changes as well. But we'll leave it where it is for now. And so now we've saved its current C frame to this variable. And then we're going to create a variable for where we want it to move to. We'll call this target C frame. And this will be equal to its current C frame. And then we'll use the multiply symbol. It's not really multiplying. Um, this is kind of like a syntactical sugar, as people call it. Um, but we're going to increase the C frame and by C frame dot new. And we're just going to move it up uh, maybe 30 studs on the Y axis. So we're going to move it up in the air. Now, how we're going to do that is we're going to use lurping. So if we say part dot c frame and obviously we could just set it straight to target dot c frame right if we set it straight to that and we click run it's going to instantly appear 30 studs in the sky now what if we wanted to move it say halfway right obviously in this case it's nice and easy we could work out that it's uh, 15 studs but it might not be so easy you know if we had lots of different uh, values and rotations going on how could we send something halfway there well, this is where lurping comes in. So what I do, instead of setting it straight to target C frame, I'm going to set it to the start C frame, and then I'm going to use the lurp method, which allows us to interpolate between two uh, values, right? So we're going to, the goal, the goal C frame is our, our target C frame. And then we've got the second parameter we see called alpha. Now, alpha is the fraction that we want to move it. So if we say 0 0.5 and then run, what we'll find is it's halfway to that 30 goal. If we set it to 1, that will be all the way. So now if I click run, it's all the way up there. And if I set it to uh, 0.1, then it's going to be just off the ground. Now, obviously, this isn't very exciting because we're just moving it instantly. If we want to have a gradual movement, we're going to need a loop for that. So we can create a very simple loop for i equals zero, move towards one, uh, and then increase it by 0 0.01 each time. So we've got our little for loop, and we're going to change the C frame value inside of that. Instead of saying 0 0.1 for the alpha, we can use the value of i, and then we'll have a short wait each time. So task dot wait just allow us to wait a frame and so now if I go back and I click run it's gonna gradually move towards our target fantastic now using a for loop isn't the, the best method to, to move things I prefer to use something called uh, the run service so if we go to the top local run service equals game get service run service now this has a very handy thing we can use. So it's run service dot heartbeat. And then we connect that to a function which will be repeated for every single frame. Okay. And inside of the function, we notice there's a suggested parameter of delta time. So if we type that out, and if I just print out delta time, we can uh, remove this for now. If we print that out, we will notice we get the time difference between every single frame, right? It's about 0 0.01 of a second. 
And so we can use that to now construct a slightly more advanced look. Because before we were kind of just guessing, we couldn't really control how long we wanted the look to last, like in a tween. So how about we set up some variables here? So the uh, the length of tween, right? So look time, we can set this to want to be three seconds long, okay? And then we'll have one for the, uh, the start time. Start time is going to be equal to tick, right? Which gets us the current time. And then we're going to have local running time. Initially, this is going to be equal to zero. And so now inside of our loop, we can set the running time to be plus equal. So equal to its current value plus whatever the value of delta time is. So that's going to tell us how long this whole loop has been running. And then we can construct a alpha value. We can calculate a alpha for our tween, which will be the current running time divided by the alert time. So if the look time's three seconds long and we've been running for uh, 1.5 seconds, then if you calculate that, it's going to be 0 0.5. So we're going to be halfway through our look. So let's create the look now, part.c frame, exactly the same as before. Start C frame, look, and target C frame, and then we're going to use that alpha value. And then finally, we'll say if the alpha is greater than or equal to one, then we're going to want to wait to exit the loop. So how I'll do this is I'll create a value for the lerp, and then I can say lerp equals all of this. Notice I've made it the on line 10 and then assigned it on line 12. If you try and make this local here, uh, we won't actually be able to access its scope. So uh, make sure we do that on a separate line. So if it's greater than or equal to one, then we can print out complete. And then we'll say, look, disconnect, which will stop this entire function from running. Okay, so once we've typed out all of that, let's go and hit run. And what we should see is it slowly moves up into the sky over three seconds towards our target position. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, well, why not use uh, tweening? Well, the reason is that if you want to change things on the fly as the, the tween is happening, there's no way to do that, but we can with lerping. So how about we add a second condition down here? We can say else if the alpha is greater than or equal to 0 0.5. So if we're halfway through our lerp, then we can change anything we want about it. So how about we change the target C frame? We set that to times equal C frame dot new. And this is going to be a, a really big uh, target because it's going to get multiplied every single frame that it's over 0 0.5. So if we, if we go and run this, it's going to get to halfway and then it's going to fly off. It's actually going to accelerate because that number is going to keep increasing every frame. Um, but there you can go. So we can see it steadily moves up, slowly moving up, gets to halfway, and then we completely change the target. So this gives us a lot more flexibility than we would from a simple tween. Now, there's a lot of ways you can play about with this. I'm not going to cover them all in this video, but hopefully that gives you a lot of ideas to get started with. If you found this video helpful, then please leave a like, and why not even consider subscribing? Leave a comment down below of any new things you'd like to see in a future video, and I'll see you all then. Goodbye.